Blog Talk Radio. Always look up, never give up, and you will reach your goals. You're important, you're more than enough. And here she is, your host for Rolling with the Diva, Sabrina Williams. Thank you. All right, it's a beautiful day, even though it's raining here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And it's exactly 4 p.m., and thank you for tuning in. I appreciate all the listeners, all the followers, and everybody that just comes to comes to Rolling with Diva to learn more about how to deal with their mind, body, and spirit. They all work together. When one's out of sync, you're totally out of sync. Today's topic is going to be the mind and emotional eating. Are you an emotional eater? Today, we're going to discuss how our emotions impact our everyday life, including how we respond to food. Life can be stressful. Learn how to eat today for your health and maintain your emotions. God loves you and has plans for your life. So we are going to talk about emotional eating and why we overeat, what we can do. Well, it's not so much overeating. It's we're reacting instead of responding to situations. Um. So I just like that part. You got, we got to stop reacting and we got to start responding. Because I know for me, a long time ago, when I was used to be stressed and I'd overeat, um, binge eating and bulimia is another whole different topic we'll talk about soon. But when I would emotionally eat, I would just be um, out of just, I would be so upset. I wouldn't even recognize emotions. I would just drive through one drive through after another one, whether it was In and Out Burger, whether it was. Jack in a box, I would just drive through one drive through, gather my emotions. I would get upset again, but not really upset because I wasn't dealing and just eating and eating until I almost went to sleep. And that is sort of a binge, but we're going to talk about binging and its aspects later on another show. But I'm basically talking today about emotional eating, why we emotionally eat, and how to get help for that, and why. Okay, I'm not a psychologist, but I'm just here to encourage you guys and knowing that. If you're emotionally eating, you're impacting your mind because your mind is controlling your your thoughts for food. Therefore, you're impacting your body, and then you overeat and you don't feel good, and then your spirit is affected because you don't feel good about yourself. So can you see how those are all work together, okay? So because sometimes when life is hard or things are not going how it was planned or maybe our child is, you know, we're moving and our child is going away to college or something, or you have a spouse that just passed away or somebody's dealing with cancer or some other form of disease, or maybe they had a traumatic brain injury. We all have those moments in life where we just re- react, and sometimes reacting can cause us more stress. So what's going on in your life right now that's making you want to eat? These are emotional eating questions. So what's, what's making you want to eat? I know for me, it used to, I would really overeat a lot because I didn't feel like I had friends, that I wasn't lovable. I'd look at myself in the mirror and be disgusted with the way I looked because I was really heavy. And, and it just would be a repeated circle. I wasn't happy with my relationship with God or with going to church. And I could come and list a whole bunch of things. I'm sure you guys can list something too. So um, first, you're going to have to identify where you're emotional eating. What emotions are you experiencing? And that's a big one Um, because a lot of times we don't even, we can't even identify. Maybe we are mad, but maybe we're holding in and the food is giving us comfort for that moment in time. And overeating sometimes or emotional eating will cause us to, you know, eat so much and then we feel stuffed. and, And for that moment in time, 30, 40 minutes or we fall asleep, we feel better. But that's just not how it's going to help us. So, you got to, again, what's going on in your life right now? What's making you want to eat? What emotions are you experiencing? Will eating make you feel better? If so, for how long? And I had to finally come to, and I've come to terms with that probably in the last two years. Um, emotional eating is not going to make me feel better. It's not. It would do, it would make me, well, let's take a step back. It would make me feel better for maybe some days for maybe a whole day because I'm just eating, eating, sleeping, going to work, and I was numb. But then some days it would only last for 10 minutes, maybe five minutes, maybe 30 minutes. 
depending on what the style of food was. And, and you guys can relate to it. It was a hamburger. It was just a hamburger to soothe me that moment. But say it was macaroni and cheese, it was something different. I mean, I would just feel comforted and loved and, you know, I'd be okay for a couple of hours. But um, it's not going to help me at that moment. So that's what you have to do. Um, think about that. Will eating make you feel better? You know, we talked about it so far long. Will eating solve your problem? Well, let's think about that. If you're hungry, yeah. You may be emotionally eating because you're hungry and you don't realize it and you haven't taken the time because you're at work or you're with your kids or you're a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad and you've been just really busy, so you've just been snacking but not really eating. So maybe, maybe it will solve the problem because you need to sit down, take a deep breath, and take some time, a few minutes to eat your food. Okay, maybe it will. But if the emotional eating is reacting to something, like somebody makes you mad, somebody hurts your feelings, you go to church and people are talking about you. Because let me tell you, in churches, people talk about you. In the streets, people talk about you. In work or business, or you've been somewhere where somebody looks strange at you. Yes, so instead of reacting, this is something I learned at church on Sunday from Burr, from the pastor Burr. That you have to, literally, you're going to have to, Allow God to be in every moment, every step, every part of your being. So when you feel alone at those times um, or you feel lonely, you're not alone. You're not lonely because you have God. And you can just start having a conversation in your head with him. All right, so we're going to play a song, and we'll be right back with Rolling with Diva. I'm so glad that you guys are um, on the radio with us. We um, will be right back. Hey, this is Sylvie, host of the Queen Sylvie Show on the Fishbowl Radio Network. Check out the show every Tuesday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can hear me keep it real about everything while making a difference promoting comedy and other artistic talents from the Dallas-Fort Worth area and around the world. Don't miss the Queen Sylvie Show. Ahala. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in.
that was doing God will help me to pray. So speaking of prayer, now I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Some people may believe in a higher power, or we a lot of people have heard of the 12-step program. You know, there's 12 steps for alcohol, narcotics, but the 12-step program is could be for anybody. It's the steps you take to give your the things you need to over to a higher power to help you deal with life. Because depending on ourselves, and, and dealing with our emotions can cause us to go up and down. And we, I really believe, even if you're an atheist, you really need a higher power to help you deal with things. So let's talk real quick about, I found a Bible verse, because, and, you know, the first start is you, you're, um, you're trying to identify what's going on right now that's making you want to eat. Um, we talk about what emotions are you experiencing? Will eating make you feel better? If so, for how long? Leading solve the problem. Well, the only person that can solve your problem is God, your higher power, or something that you believe in that is not bent on you solely, is dependent on you, depending on, uh, you know, even if you're religious, um, but it, you know, it helps you. So I like this verse, Psalm 3 3. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory, and the one who lifts my head. Psalm 61 1 through 2. Hear my cry, O God. Give heed to my prayer from the end of the earth. I call to you when my heart is in, is faint. Lead me to the rock that is a high, that's higher than I. And that rock is Jesus. That rock is, is Jesus Christ, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Again, for those people who don't believe in Jesus, there's, you know, people have, you know, some people have Buddha. But if you notice, there's somebody that's the, you're giving it to a higher power. So it's either I'm going to just from going on, I'm just going to say God or a higher power. You know, and if you have that, it's easy to say, okay, because my favorite verse is Philippians 4, 4 through 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but through prayer and supplication, give your request to God. On the next radio break, I'll actually look up the whole verse and read it to you because it's a very powerful verse. Okay, so we're going to go to what triggers emotions, how I trigger my emotions. Okay, so our emotions are triggered by what's going on in, with our mind or our body. You could be tired and you're eating to maybe try to stay awake and you don't even realize it. You could have just had it with your boyfriend or girlfriend, you know, or significant others and you're upset. Um, your boss at work just told you you're going to have to work long hours and you have a big family vacation plan this week. Um, the key to catching, discover your emotional triggers is, is, is to catch yourself reacting when your emotions are triggered. To start controlling your emotional triggers, choose three items that most often set up your emotions when you don't get things, these needs met, okay? And that's really important. So it could be, let me read that again, to start controlling your emotional triggers, choose three items that most often set your emotions. Is it anger? Is it traffic? Is it, you know, getting up in the morning with your children and you're feeling rushed? Is it what you perceive as stress, so on. And actually then you need to be present in the moment. Okay, so I know I'm stressed. I know I'm about to react. I know I'm going to eat. Instead of eating one donut, I'm going to eat six donuts. But then you're like, okay, I can't do that. So we'll be right back. We're going to play a song, Nettie, you are.
Okay, that was Nettie. Would you all love that young lady? She's an awesome young lady. She just came to um, know God in the last uh, several years, but she is on fire for singing God's word. Um, you guys can find Nettie, um, N-E-D-Y, on Instagram or Facebook. So we were on number um, six of what do your boundaries protect you from? And this is from the website Barb Raveling, B-A-R-B-R-A-V-E-L-I-N-G, and it's emotional triggers, and this is a biblical um, perspective. So so maybe you didn't have boundaries. This is what number six. I'm paraphrasing number six. Maybe you, somebody overstepped their boundaries and upset you. Um, so what do you do from there? Do you, can you get back your boundaries? Maybe not at that minute, but you don't run to the kitchen and say, oh, my gosh, you know, or drive through the drive through after work because you're so upset. Do you need protection today? Are you tired? Are you frustrated? Do you need a hug? That's paraphrasing number seven. Number eight, what do you think God wants to teach you through this trial? And sometimes it's just little things God's trying to teach us. Sometimes it's not reacting, but responding. And I call it responding to God or your higher power and letting God be in charge of what's going on with you. Because when you do that, you you are really, really helping yourself. So I like this Bible verse, Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. One, Jeremiah 29, 11 is one of, another one of my favorite verses. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity to give you a hope, a future and a hope. Then you will call up on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen for you. Listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with your heart. Romans 5, 3 or 4. And not only this, but we all ex- exalt in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. We sometimes have to go through trials and tribulations. We have to go through dealing with a coworker that we don't want to go deal with. We have to go through um, trials that God put on us that just impact our whole family and make us feel weak, but we are stronger with God. There are so many things that I could name, you know, that people are going through. Fibromyalgia is with people who have pain constantly every day, and even moving a leg can be painful. You can have a child with lupus. You could um, have a family member or adult that's been diagnosed with um, muscular dystrophy. You could have a spouse, a child who just went through a very bad accident and, and their brain is um, damaged. And now they have to train themselves all over again because right now they're in the baby stage, even as an adult, say they're 54. There's so many things that happen. But let me tell you guys, with the help of God, with God being by your side, with you calling on him, it helps. And I don't want you to think I'm just, oh, my God, jiving you or blowing smoke up your booty. It's not that I am telling you because I know it looks. When I get upset, I am trying and continue. I'm not perfect, but to remind myself that God loves me. There is the reason things happen. I cannot react. A lot of times when things don't go my way and I'm such a control freak of that, just even the littlest things because I get so nervous. I try to control it, and then I'll get myself hot, more upset, and then my blood pressure will go up, and then I get a headache, and, and then I, you know, it just it just spirals. So I have to tell myself God's in control. And what I learned, like I said, from Sunday is that if God is with me every part of my being, and I'm continually having questions and talking with him, and, and I'm asking questions, he's asking questions, and, and going back and forth. And I'm having those conversations just like a friend is just there with me 24-7 because God is with you 24-7. You're going to feel really good about it, and you're just going to start responding because you respond to God instead of reacting to the situation. Somebody just hits you from behind. It's a rainy day. you got to get home. You're having a dinner party. But you're just like, okay, I can deal with this. All right. Um, so. I like. I found this website as I was just looking through this as I was playing a song. It was called OutsmartYourBrain.com, and it what triggers your emotions. The strengths that that have helped you see are also your greatest emotional triggers. When you feel someone's not honoring what makes you feel special, and hear that what makes you feel special, not them. When your brain perceives that someone is taking a plan to take one of these these important things away from you, then your emotions are triggered. You react with anger, fear, then you quickly rationalize your behavior, and so it makes sense. You may lose trust in the person or situation. You may lose courage or react in a way that hurt, could hurt your relationships in the future. And let me tell you, let me back that up just a little bit. Sometimes 
it is okay to react to the way people are treating you. When you have been the person and you have tried and tried and tried and tried, sometimes in a nice way, reacting, letting know people, I love you, but this is not acceptable and I'm not going to allow this anymore. No, I'm not going to come pick you up um, so we can go to work together and you're 10 minutes behind every day for the last 10 months. 10 months. We're going to try this again. You're going to be on time waiting at the door for me um, and I'm going to pick you up and you're going to come right to the car. If you can't do that, then you'll have to go drive yourself to work because I like getting them work 15 minutes early. I do not like getting to work, you know, with only minutes to spare to clock in. And now see how I did that? I didn't yell. I used I statements. I wanted to use, but you need to make yourself clear. That's setting boundaries. But some, some, some of the most common and most of the triggers, and I'm reading this from how smart your brain are, acceptance. I'm just going to read a couple. This is a lot of you, but I can go find them. Being liked, freedom, autonomy. And that could be really, um, let's talk about autonomy is when you don't feel like you are your own person and somebody may be controlling you. Um, and that happens a lot with domestic violence where people have a low self-esteem and other people try to control them predictability, new challenges, fun. Maybe you're so excited to go on a, a, an outing and you have plan for certain people coming in. There's more people that can help be that. Being valued, not feeling that you're important, being treated fairly, acceptance. And those can go along with different cultures, different races. And we know that goes on a lot with African-Americans, Hispanics, other races where the, sometimes they feel inferior or treated like other races are superior to them. So, um, and there's a lot of things that are happening that are not right. When there's more um, African Americans killed um, in the streets than there are of any other race. So, um, but peacefulness, you're not getting time to rest. So those are just a couple of emotions. Um, and they may not, some may not be triggered, some may not. But um, one of the things you have to do is you have to assess the things we talked about, and you can go back and listen to those things, but you have to start controlling your emotions and triggers. Um, and you have to, like, really work the things out when you don't get your emotions or your needs met. Be honest with yourself. Um, what are your needs when not met will likely create a reaction. Identify the needs you most hold dear. Okay? And that could be, so, like I said, those lists, those are respected, um, your boundaries respected. These, um, it's critical to know that these are not bad. Um, we all have different needs. And being present, you have, and this is the thing that we talk about every day, this is the mindfulness. I'm going to do this on a show so you guys can be able to record it yourself and hear it. But you got to relax. you got to breathe. you got to take a deep breath. In through your nose, it comes deep from your belly and let it out slowly because you want to release that tension. Detach, clear your mind of all thoughts, drop your awareness to the center of your body just below your navel. Feel yourself breathe. Again, this is called part of my group. And focus. Focus, close your eyes and focus on the situation. We all can take one minute even if we have to go to the bathroom and sit there and really focus because you don't want to say something that's heated. Okay? And I suggest that you guys go to this article that's by um, Marcia Reynolds, um, and, and you can find her at, um, email her at marcy at outsmartyourbrain.com at 1-602-954-9030, and this was done on um, 2016, and it's called Out Discover Your Emotional Triggers. Okay, so you guys can go there, but let's get back to where we were and finish up. Is there anything you need to accept? We can't control everything. Like the, before we played the song, we said, what do you think God wants to teach us or your higher power? Got to really think about this. Sometimes life is just full of journeys and life lessons. Is there anything you need to accept? Do you need to accept that you can't control everybody? You can't control your teenager who keeps staying out that you're going to have to put on lockdown. And you can't control your, um, your coworker who likes to gossip about everybody. You can control your reaction. You can choose who you hang out with. What can you thank God for in this situation? And I know that's really hard, especially if it's a situation where somebody's being abused, domestic violence, um, somebody's being dominated in a situation 
that's, that can really be. So with those you want to, first with those you want to definitely call 211 in all 50 states and get some help for yourself to get out of those situations because it's not okay to stay in those situations. It's not okay to have somebody abusing you, hurting you, beating you, um, slapping you, um, forcing you to do things you don't want um, and get help. Um, you can just call a shelter if that's all you can do. You can call 911 and they can help you get to your shelter. Yes, I understand that that person may be your sole provider, but your life is worth more and you will recover and God will provide and your higher power. And so for me in these days, I can just thank God for situations when they do occur that I'm able to see God in a situation, able to smile and just take a step back. I, if I'm in some place where it's not home, I'll just immediately go to the bathroom. I feel myself getting anxious or feeling not respected. I'll wash my face or just sit there and just, you know, take a few minutes to calm down. Life is not going to pass me by. And that's the best for me and for everybody else. We all have our things that trigger us. We all have the ways that we need to calm down. Also, you may have that friend that you can just pick up the phone and just call, or maybe you can write in a journal, or maybe it's listening to music. But it's better to learn to respond in life instead of reacting, because sometimes responding gives us labels, when it's, especially at work or with certain people, and we don't want to be labeled. We're more than a label. We don't be, want to be known as a person who blows up. So I just thought that that would, I hope that today helped you with us talking about emotional eating triggers. We um, Let me read you Philippians 4.19. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. All your needs, every one of your needs. It may not be solved today. It may not be solved tomorrow. It may be solved when you actually, sometimes people ask for God to heal their loved one. Sometimes that's, that healing can come through death. So we have to be prepared how God answers, not how we want to answer. Um, we're going to play a song, and we'll be right back. Thank you for listening to Rolling with the Diva. Remember, you can find um, listen to these um, podcasts on, um, hold on. Well, we have a caller. So we're going to try this again, because sometimes callers lately have been sort of kind of crazy. But we're going to try this again, because we always like to be fair. Hello. Hi, Sabrina. Hi. It's Monique. Who's this? Oh, my God. Monique, how are you? I'm doing great, actually. I love your the the topic for today. Thank you. Okay, everybody. Monique is my sister, and you guys know I use that word sister very, very, very carefully, but she is my sister. Actually, I'm older, but she's younger, but she's actually the older one. She acts more mature. <laughs> Monique and I met. We met in, in a college class, and we have clicked, in a, and I've seen Monique's kids being, you know, born, and she's seen my kids, and she's just the most fabulous lady ever. And to have her to just even call in and say hello is amazing. So, Monique, what you have been through a lot in your life, what do you think about emotional eating? You know, uh, it, you know, I take it as a different context. You know, I do want to say how amazing you are as well. Um, just want to say I'll always remember when you told me you're like a. I think at that time I was in my late twenties. You're you're like you're a twenty seven year old in a fifty year old mindset. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget you that. that. Um, you are. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, uh, for me. I guess it would be, uh, em- I do have emotional outbursts, and it took me a long time to realize that. Um, emotional eating, I don't eat, actually. I just get really um, sick to my stomach to the point where uh, I can't eat, and then it's hard to eat for me, and then I get really sick. But, you know, by God's grace, uh, I haven't experienced that in a while, and it's because of God's grace. And learning to give that control to the Lord because I am a very proud person and he's been working with me in his ways. And just being able to say that is, is difficult because I'm acknowledging that I have a problem. And as a proud person, I don't want to acknowledge that I have a problem because 
in my eyes, I'm perfect. <laughs> so it's, I, I um, hear that. <laughs> but I know that, you know, um, my parents have prayed for me for a long time. And through life and a lot of um, struggles in life, um, I'm just happy that I had parents that who were consistent in their prayers and they were consistent in their walk with Christ. And it, it you know, they weren't hypocrites. And right. I would, I remember when I was, you know, falling, you know, my marriage was falling apart and I thought I was going to lose my family. Um, and there was some alcohol involved and it just, it was all bad news. It was just spiraling downwards. And then I finally got on my knees and I just prayed and I said, God created me a pure heart. Oh God, I renew a steadfast spirit within me, you know, Psalm 51. And Ever since then, my walk with him has been amazing. And um, don't get me wrong, I have my struggles still. Right. Um, emotionally, I will break down. And I'll take a drive. I'll have to be alone. I'll do some prayers. And just keep pushing forward because recognizing that the enemy is there, and he's so cunning. And I, don't, I don't even want to give oh, him yes. that credit, you know. And it's just like, you know what? God is a he's, – he is – he's a peace, peaceful God. He's, he's God of peace. You know, he's a prince of peace. Why am I feeling this way? And it's because it's Satan, you know, our ultimate enemy. And, you know, there's a spiritual warfare out there. And, and even with the consuming, uh, you know, too many calories, you know, my sister, she's dealing with that right now. because She is an emotional eater. So she asked me, Monique, I need you to encourage me. And, you know, when I get bored, I want to get depressed and, or, you know, just when I'm around people, when I'm happy, I just feel like I just need to eat, eat, eat. Yeah. And, you know, so I, you know, I just tell her, you just got to pray. Just pray and at least you acknowledge your problem. Um, but I think it does go down to an, a deeper emotional level, you know. And um, I think by asking God to reveal what that is to you and being open to it. And if you're, if you, if I think if you're sensing any retraction, oh, no, that's me, then maybe it is you, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think sometimes we just have to pray differently for God, asking God to reveal to ourselves because we're selfish. You know, we're, we're selfish yeah. human beings. And, and when I don't get my way, oh, my goodness, it's like the house <laughs> is crumbling, you know. <laughs> Everyone's like, yeah. uh, all right, it's time to exit the building. Uh, you're, something's wrong with your wife over there, and um, uh, bye. <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, I heard you reading uh, on another broadcast, you were reading one of your poems you had wrote to a friend, but can I read something? It's really personal, um, but I feel I mean, like I have to read it. I am it. so glad that you called in anything that you want to read. I would be honored, and it's and I know that somebody listening to this podcast is gonna be um, be receiving that. I I did this thing, and everybody knows. I always say this almost every program. I am really when I do come up with a title, which is God helping me come up with a title. I never know until I do the show why it was meant to be. So I know today you were meant to be here on this show. And that's God. It really is. Because my shows are not, all I do is come up with a title or interview people. And I just, I never, know, I don't know the questions and I start talking to them. So I know today, as always, God answered the reason for the show. Because it really is, I mean, he just blessed me today. So absolutely, young lady, read on. <laughs> says, Yahweh, shalom, the Lord is peace. I thank you for anything and everything you've provided for me. Even though we cannot see some, such as peace, love, joy, fruitfulness, comfort, sanity, and appreciation. Yahweh, shalom. It brings much comfort to me to know you are with me at all times, even when I do not feel your presence. I know this is true, for your word says so. Every day is a new road on our journey for growth. Thank you, Father, for revealing to me that sometimes I react and respond on my own selfish terms. You showed me how sometimes my problems are because of me and my own selfish desires wanting to be fulfilled. As you are molding me, my selfishness is part of your intricate design. 
Yahweh, how can I deny myself the desires? How can I not be hurt when I give love and not receive it? Do I turn callous inside? But this is not of you, and you are not and you are nothing but light. How do I overcome this constant struggle of wanting to be loved by my husband, my family, friends? Is it good that I still want their love, or am I too dependent on their love and not yours? Yahweh, I love you more than anything and take covenant never to forsake you as I have in the past to you. I am so ashamed of the past, yet see all that happened on your accord. As I read and read and the Holy Spirit speaks to me, I understand that if I do not have the Lord in me, then I have nothing. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Please heal and restore my heart, my soul, and my mind, for you restore everything to a new. People have recommend, um, recommended Bibles to me, Yahweh, but this app you gave me reveals much insight, and the Holy Spirit opens my eyes. Knowing and comprehending what you desire for me to know is a blessing. And constant fellowship with you always heals whatever negative emotion I'm experiencing. Lord, you know what I need before I even speak a word, and sometimes I don't know how to articulate it. Please continue to delight in me and continue meeting my needs physically, emotionally, and spiritually. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. We cannot always see goodness and mercy ahead of us, but when we, when we look back behind us, we see them. That helps us to look ahead and see more clearly where we, we glimpse our place at God's sight forever. Monique, that is, that is awesome. And I usually have a lot of words to say after, but today, all by God, I'm going to pray us out and we're going to end the show because God knows what somebody needs who's going to be listening to this. You guys have been rolling with a diva, and my special sister, Monique, from Cali, is on the phone with us, and it was a blessed day. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for my radio show. And if I just touch one person, Lord, that's amazing to me. And I thank you for what you do for us. I confess my sins of known, unknown, and just ask that you would bless the people who are listening to this radio station that they would be able to know that they are loved, they are wanted. It's okay not to be okay. But at the end of the day, we got to depend on God. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. I'm doing this different today. I'm ending just like this. You guys will be okay with that? Because I'm okay because I just think it's awesome. Monique, (laughs) thank you very much. And I'm going to hang up the phone and call you. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Bye, everyone. I love you guys. Have a good night. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.